Hi and welcome back. I just got this in my art haul today and I want to test it. The Komorebi watercolor paint set from Mozart. I have been really curious about the, their products for quite a while and these watercolors pretty much more than anything else. They sometimes have some watercolor paper that I'm curious about too, but they're sold out at the moment. So, there's a cardboard sleeve here, and this is Komorebi is a symbol word in Japanese which describes the subtle beauty of sunlight shining through the leaves of the trees and the dance the rays make. I, that doesn't sound simple to me, that's a quite an advanced word. Our watercolor paint has been created with artists in mind, focusing on a high level of pigmentation and a soft texture to our paints. This, um, this set comes with 40 vibrant colors which covers the essential range for any artist, of which 8 are metallic and 6 are neon colors. Capture the beauty of all the subtleties in your artwork with our Komorebi paint set. And if there's anybody who knows Japanese or is Japanese, I am so sorry for slaughtering this. I'm quite sure I pronounce it like horrible. So let's see what's in here. That's the swatch sheet you can fill out. Oh, there's a big gloop here. Um, hello there. I hope that haven't spilled out to the other side. This one has spilled to. Oh, that's sticky. There's half a pan of stuff sitting there. That's going to be interesting. Spill it all the way over here. It's very goopy. Sticky. And very, very purple. It's a violet. Hyacinth violet. Probably been shipped out when it was not dry enough. Well, they're very soft. <laughs> but it was savable, so it was not too bad. And this is just on the side of the, the pants. They have a little bit of a smell to them, but no, it's not too unpleasant. I'm trying to peel off the paint that sits on here because that's a lot. It, it kind of looks like this was maybe overfilled because it doesn't look like too much of it spilled out. Maybe it was a little overfull. sticks on my fingernails so I'll try and do that the rest of it later uh, the color order is a little weird it starts with crimson carmine series violet and they're not stuck in here oh it's nice the, the color number is printed with large numbers on here 
that one is totally stuck. Hazen violet, red ochre, yellow ochre, gamboge. That's a weird gamboge. The gamboge I have in other sets is kind of brownish when it's dry. But let's see when we swatch it. Orange, brown, yellow, a brilliant yellow, brilliant yellow, lemon yellow. I'm going to grass green, olive green, brilliant green, peak green, and turquoise. Uh, maybe it makes sense anyways. Ultramarine, azure blue, deep blue, brown, burnt sienna, burnt umber, paints gray, and gray, and deep black, and white. Uh, neon, uh, neon colors comes here. Neon pink, neon orange, neon red, neon yellow, neon green, and neon blue. I never use neon colors because they're not light fast. But it can be fun enough to have some. Then there's a metallic red ochre, metallic bronze, metallic gold, metallic yellow. It's like a pale gold, really. Metallic purple, metallic green, metallic blue, and metallic white. I got no metallic watercolors whatsoever. Now, I don't like that the lid is hinged, but I could probably fix that. And this makes it a little tricky to do the swatch up there. It sits in a flimsy plastic tray. So if I do things sideways, I'm sorry. I guess I can swatch it out now. Brush. There. Need some water. So let's try this. It's thirty four. Twenty five is it? The numbering seems a little random, but it doesn't matter. I don't paint with numbers anyways. It's a very, very bright violet. I got a Japanese gouache, uh, acrylic gouache that has this color. It's uh, it's kind of, and that's not light fast because there's some kind of uh, bright neon com component in there. It's a nice crimson. It's very pigmented. And they just they lift really easily out of the pants. The rewet, so good. Carmine, very pink carmine, but very nice. I, for that feel, I took some of that spill paint off the lit hair. Oh, we got Cherise. Wow, hot pink. I doubt this one is a slight fast. But it's very nice. And violet. Those of have the kind of the size of a full pen. This looks like a dioxin violet, but there's no um, pigment information, so I don't know if it is because it could also be. There's another violet that looks a lot like dioxin violet, but it's not light fast. Skip that one and I'll pick that red ochre up that was kind of hit the spill block. It's a very opaque red ochre here. I'd say that's the color we would normally call burnt sienna or raw sienna. Raw sienna, probably. 
And you'll see yellow ochre. Very opaque like you would normally see in a yellow ochre. That was this funny gamboge. Um, it's not the color I would normally use as a gamboge, so it's an orange of sorts. There's a, a more reddish orange here. Looks kind of somewhat opaque. Very bright, very nice. Okay, this is the one they call Brilliant Yellow. Very opaque. That could look like a cadmium yellow. Lemon yellow, more cold yellow. That is more transparent than the other one. That's nice. And a grass green. It looks black in the pan. You can't see it. Out. I'm picking it up, but so this is like a dark green. That's interesting because normally if you in European and Western colors, if you get a grass green, that is much brighter. Olive green. Feels a little opaque too, but definitely an olive green. Brilliant green, yeah, that's like a jade green. Looks like a... Flato green, to be honest. That's nothing wrong with that. That's a fine green colour. And here's another. That's a little more yellowish. That's called peak green. I think we would call it a pea green. But hey. Turquoise. It's not so often you see turquoise in watercolor sets. That's a greenish turquoise. That's fine. Ultramarine. Yeah, I'd say it looks like an ultramarine. It has the same kind of weak, weak color to it. Acerite blue. It looks like a flato blue green shade. That's yeah, okay, that's a good enough color. Deep blue. It looks like a kind of a Prussian blue indigo type of blue. This one's just called brown. It's a golden brown. Uh, like a Van Dyke. Here's a burnt sienna. Yeah. Recognizable enough. And a burnt umber. Payne's grey. It should be bluish. And it is, but it's very muddy. And a grey. This looks more like a French grey. Not so pigmented. And a deep black. Oh, that is ink black. That is good. I like a proper black. If you have to put a black in my watercolor, make it a, a real black and not that. Oh, what would you call it? Ivory black, that's kind of faded grey, warm. Can't tell about the white. Let's try and paint over the number a little bit. It seems like it's relatively opaque. I don't use it so. So here comes the neon colours. Neon pink. Oh yeah. <laughs> neon, it is. 
Neon orange already in the pan, it looks like a safety life jacket. Neon red. Huh? <gasps> That's like a core bright red. Wow. That was nice. And yellow. Neon green. That's a little fade. Not very impressive, but it's there. Neon blue. That looks like a, a bright cerulean blue. That's probably the most useful of the of the name colors. So we got a metallic white here. I'm very curious about the metallic colors. Got some markers, but I don't have any watercolor. I can see a shimmer in that, but you probably can't. And then there's a light blue. curious you can see the shimmer when it's wet so I'm curious to see if it maintains it when it gets dry metallic green I should probably swatch this out on black paper as well purple A nice purple. Yeah, definitely the metallic colors, as expected, they they need to rewet a little longer, It'll get worked a little better. Metallic yellow. Oh, it's gold. Bronze. Oh, I like the bronze. I'm not surprised. I, I'm partial to bronze anyways. And called metallic red ochre. It's kind of a pinkish red. That's nice. I like that. I would call it copper, but hey. It's just words. I so that was the swatch part and it's a nice set of colors um, there's not any like a real true red but I could probably mix my way into one the crimson is the closest um, these two are so bright that I think they have they're not probably not light fast the gamboge is not a gamboge I think that's an orange mix of some um, but overall yeah by the looks of it it's an okay set of inexpensive watercolors there's lots and lots of paint in each of these uh, pans so now I'm curious to get get mixing here because we got the ultramarine and that should mix well with pretty much all the the reds that are here well wow. that lifted up a lot I'm missing a warm red that's actually I just realized they're all cold reds Maybe this one that they call crimson, which is usually a a cold red, that doesn't mix well with ultramarine, so that might actually be a warm red. Let's try. Got a warm yellow here. This should give a good orange. 
Mm, <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. Yeah, yeah. Just give it a little time to mix up. Yeah. It, so their crimson is is a warm red. Okay. I'm used to it being a cold red. It actually makes a very nice, lovely orange. Come on. Will you make it purple? With the ultramarine. Yes, it will. And in a shade that is not on the palette, so that is really good. Cherries. And this one gives another nice they 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 don't mix like right away when you put it on the paper it has to like work you have to work it a little bit before it mixes but then all of a sudden it's like it it does it An interesting concept. This violet is not dioxin violet, that's for sure. It's way too pale, which means it is likely not last light fast. Along with the ultramarine, it gives a deep blue, which is nice. I'm gonna take that hyacinth violet off the lid again. Oh, and they separate a little bit when the pigments separate when they, at least here in the purples, when they dry. But that's okay. I actually like that because that, that gives it actually some, some life, so to speak, so it's not so flat. It gives a little bit of texture. So there's this azurite blue. I would say that's probably good for greens. Very much so. It makes its greens like a a flavor blue, so. not all expected. So what about you? The deep blue. That looks greenish too, so let's try and add some more yellow here. Yeah. This is a very good green. Grayish green, fern green. It doesn't dry super bright. This looks kind of matte on that one too. I'm using Montval from Cancel to, to mix on. And that usually keeps the colors kind of nice and bright. So I'm curious to use this on some more professional paper. Mm -mm -mm. Curious about the cherries. If we put a warm yellow on that. That's pretty close to a very true 
magenta because that gives a nice orange actually. So yeah, so that's um, some the colors are nice, but I am absolutely not sure about the light fastness. But for painting, painting stuff isn't going up on the wall. They are absolutely fine. It's a good mixing set, and that brilliant green makes them. An interesting blue, grayish blue with a with a violet. It makes a nice brown with the orange. So yeah, that's a wide range of things. Now, there's something I've been curious about because I haven't seen anybody do this. And that is, can you mix the metallic colors with each other? So there's a red, and here we've got a blue. And that was too orange, so that kind of gave a gray. And you can see all the brush strokes in it. So I guess the answer is not particularly well. The gold and the what they call metallic bronze and metallic red ochre mixed a little better. But they kind of need to lay in a thick layer otherwise they, they sediment out. At least on this paper. I think in a more absorbent paper they will just stay where you put them. So what if you take the green which is not very strong in itself. It's kind of a grayish green. And add some neon green to it. It's hard to tell while it's wet. But it looked kind of just kind of grotty. I definitely have some separations of a pigment when when they dry up. Try and put this away and get the zoom. Look at that. You can see how that separated. It was like one color, and now that it is dried up, it's separated into different colors. Part of this is also because the paper is bulging. Um, and here, you can see it too happening. Not so much in the blue and purple. There's some some light areas and that's because it, the pigment ran off the paper because the, there's a top of a ridge there. Um, the blue and the green, not so much. But it got some some drying issues, and that's the paper, and that's the the brown. Not so much separation. That was the orange and green. The red and or the yellow up here just made a an orange, and no pigment separation. So it's a little, but it's to be expected. 
so um, I'll pause the camera and let this uh, let this dry and then we'll have another look be right back okay so I got my answer people don't mix metallics because they don't mix this one with the red ochre and the bronze wasn't too bad the red ochre and the blue it's not that it is bad it is just uh, not mixed it's two colors painted up on top of each other kind of separated out um, into something indescribable grayish modeled the neon and the green though was was a good idea that that really made both things pop in a, in a different way and the others yeah I, I think they they behave pretty much like I would have hoped for and um, I'm actually quite looking forward to try these out in a painting the, we can we can look at them up close uh, and uh, but that won't really tell us too much because this paper causes backgrounds and cauliflowering and stuff like this uh, it, and that's because there's so much sizing on this paper that everything just kind of float around on the surface here's the was that the series I think with brilliant lemon made a very nice warm orange also again some backgrounds and stuff due to the paper here's a piece that is not too dry but that was quite nice so my my general feeling about this is that it will be a quite good mixing set i didn't try to do any mixes with the browns but i've, I've tried some of the the main colors in here um, and I'm quite curious about those metallics because, as I said, I've never ever had these, uh, that kind of watercolors. Now these are, are dried and there is some shine to them, so, so they are metallic or pearlescent. The neon colors are also kind of neon colored. And, uh, yeah, the others, it's, it's quite good. So let me see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row. So that's eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, so it's like a 36 set of normal colors and then the addition of the, the six neon colors and eight metallic. And I think for the price, that's very, very good. Um, so uh, yeah, for for a a hobby or practicing set, I'm I'm quite sure it is good. And for paintings, that is not non non gallery stuff. So this was the most set. I I'm really curious. I'm I'm definitely gonna try and make a painting with it. And um, I didn't think it felt any different than, than any European or American brand I've tried. So, uh, so I'm really, really curious about this. And I think for 25 euros, that, that's quite a good set. Absolutely. So thank you all for watching and please throw me a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll be back with more, more watercoloring stuff. And next time it won't be just swatches. Take care.